What's your name? Real shot. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Well, we just saw four people give their lives to Jesus. Four people give their lives to Jesus so that people could be saved. My friends, I'm here to tell you today, if you don't trust in the Lord, you will find yourself separated from God and on your way to hell. The Bible says, sin separates you from God and sends you to hell. Sin is a reality in our lives. Sin is destroying this community. Sin is destroying this culture. Sin is destroying our hearts and our minds. It's causing people to be sick. I believe sin is like a mental illness. You know why? Because sin makes you do things that make no sense. Sin tells you to sleep around before marriage. Sin tells you to commit adultery. Sin tells you to steal. Sin tells you to lie. Sin is what causes problems in your life and in this community. Am I wrong? The Bible says this, and I'm going to read it directly. It's a quote. And I thank God for, the, for our freedoms. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, Verses 9. This is a direct quote from the Word of God. As far as I know, England is still a country that stands on the Bible and that gives people freedom of speech and freedom of religion. So I'm going to read exactly what the Bible says. It says, Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor male prostitutes, nor homosexual offenders, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor slanderers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you have been washed and you have been changed. My friends, the Bible says the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God. The wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God. You need to repent and trust in Jesus. Everything that we see going on in the world in the name of freedom, listen, is not true freedom. The Bible says the truth will set you free. And the truth is the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. My friends, the king of the kingdom, the king of the world, the one who has all authority on heaven and earth is Jesus. Pardon? Someone asked me, do I have a license to do this? Jesus. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Jesus said, I have authority in heaven and on earth. So what is my authority? The authority of Almighty God. This is my passport. This is my documentation. And I'm not afraid of you. You need to be afraid of God. Because the Bible says hell is on its way. I can't be saying my religion. I can't be. Pardon, pardon me. Well, what, what, what can I? What can I do? You're talking about homeless and bisexual and gay. I did talk about homeless people. I talked about. I talked about heterosexuals. I talked about homosexuals. I talked about everything. I talked about war. Oh, what, what, what's wrong with your? It's not a boyfriend. He's gay. I don't agree with him. I don't need to. I'm bisexual. Yeah. Sorry. Gay and gay. Pardon me? Why are you doing it in front of town? Why am I preaching the word of God and exercising my freedom of speech? Maybe maybe you shouldn't exercise your freedom of speech in front of me because now I'm being offended by you. It's wrong to preach my religion on a free in a free country? Is it wrong? No, not in front of them, no. So 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 they own the block. So are homeless people own the block. No, I'm sorry. Listen. No, I'm not gonna sit down. Oh maybe you can. But listen. Everybody is entitled with freedoms yeah. and everybody is deserving of respect and dignity. Yeah. I challenge you by the law. I challenge you by the word. We have dignity and respect. Every single person has a right to believe and preach what they want to preach. Christian, Am I right? Forgive. If you're a Christian, this is Britain. And as far as I know, Britain is under the Commonwealth Society where everybody has freedom of speech, freedom of
of lights and I preach my religion and I preach my faith and I'm proud of my faith. You can be proud of what you want to be proud of and I will be proud of Jesus. I will be proud of my faith and you can be proud of whatever. Sure, what can I, what can I say? Offer love to everybody. Take that out of my face, please. Get this on camera, please. Go ahead. Get the camera. I'm not comfortable with some of the things you've said. Okay? What did I say? You've probably seen me. I've been sitting there for a while. Yeah. I understand, okay? I understand. Yes, you are allowed okay, to film. Thank you. That you are expressing your views, yeah. okay? I understand that a lot of what you're quoting is straight from the Bible. Straight from the Bible. Okay? And I appreciate that, okay? That is your honest held belief, okay? But I cannot allow you, okay, to project this in the street at this level when you can see how irate people are becoming. What, what's the law that I can't preach my faith? Public order, okay? Public order that I can't, I can't if you're causing preach someone, if you're causing, the word of God. If you're causing someone harassment, alarm and distress... Who's, who's harassing then, anybody? Who's, okay, so I've had two people come up to me and complain already. What did they say? Okay, they've said that the scripture that you've quoted or the words that you've said in relation to homosexuality sure. and homelessness has offended me. Can I ask okay? you something? Yes, Is, is this a banned book in no, English? No, it's not a banned book at all. So am I allowed to read from the Bible? Are you allowed to read the Bible? Yes, you can okay. read from the Bible. But so I'm going to read... People, okay? So, so if, if I read the Bible and that offends somebody, people, then, then... So their rights trump mine? If you're offending them, yes. So by reading okay. the... Is the Bible an offense? No, I haven't told you to read the Bible. Okay, okay. So, so if I read the Bible and someone's offended by my projection of my faith, which I'm entitled to project, yep. so you're saying I'm wrong for projecting what the Bible says? What did, I, what did I do that caused them alarm? You're speaking about homosexuality. I read, I read. I am talking to your mother from that Bible. I'm talking to you. These people were homeless. You were preaching about homelessness. I did preach about homelessness. Okay, they're taking offense to that. That's what did I, what did I say? That's what did I say? I don't need a federal license to preach my faith public. So as far as I know, I'm quoting the Bible, preaching my faith, and I'm being harassed by the police now for what, what did I, I didn't do anything illegal. Whilst you're speaking to the camera about being harassed by the police, you're not being harassed by the police. So what, what's we've, going on? we've just had numerous calls through to our so, control room, so, which hence is why sure. we're here. So you, you need to verify the facts. Yes. So you've been sitting here, everything's on live camera right now. It's publicly all over the world. Well, I've actually right just turned up here. I haven't been yeah. sitting here. So you, you weren't in the conversation. So I quoted from the scripture, which is not illegal. Mm -hmm. I preach my views, which is not illegal. Mm -hmm. I have freedom of speech. I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. So I'm creating public disorder for preaching the Bible, my faith, using freedom of speech. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it's the calls that we've been getting. Yeah, so the calls, so basically anybody can lie about somebody and say they're bothering me and therefore I have to be shut down because someone produces well, that. No, but we need to be seen to look into it. Yeah, at the moment we're not, we're not shutting you down or anything. It's just that we've got so many numerous calls sure. through that we had to come and speak to I, you. I think you're getting calls because people don't, they're, they're actually Christophobic. Yeah, they're actually discriminatory bigots that are, that are um, uh, producing religious discrimination. <laughs> so actually I'm producing a call right now towards everybody that complained against me and saying that they're, they're causing me harassment. Okay, okay, and they're they're producing religious discrimination. So I'm going to ask you to look into that, please. Okay. And um, uh, these uh, actually those homeless guys were actually coming up to me, telling me to shut up, uh, saying that what I'm saying is is not is foul words, not good. That's called religious discrimination and harassment. Yeah, I need to speak to people. So if you guys are willing to to look into that, that would be good. I just don't want you to do anything else at the moment because I've got somebody else that's coming down to speak to you. Okay, so. So, uh, so my my rights are being infringed. No, I, I'm on a time clock. I don't have yeah, well, I don't have all the time in the yeah, world. Well, I, as far as I know, that I didn't do anything illegal. I'm just asking you to hold on for just 
Well, maybe you guys can. No, I actually want to preach because I actually believe that people need to hear the gospel. Well, you can. And if I didn't do anything illegal. No, you haven't if, done anything. Right. And if I'm not under arrest. That's oh, right. The other people. Right. I want to speak to okay. you anyway. Sure. So just. Give us so a while I wait, yeah. I'm, I'm going to Thank preach you. the word. So I'm going to continue to preach the word. Where's my mic? I'm going to uh, continue to preach the word until everything's verified because I did nothing illegal. I preach the word of God. I preach the gospel. I preach my views. I quote it from scripture. And everything is live on camera for the world to see. So my friends, I'm going to say it again. Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. What does that mean? It means that Jesus, the king of the entire world, has came on the earth, came to be a savior. And the reason why is because we're living in sin. Sin brings shame, internal anger, and negativity. Sin is destructive. Sin is violating the law of God. Sin is violating the conscience. Sin is doing things that are contrary to faith. And my friends, I'm here to tell you today that I am a born-again Christian and I'm proud. Because Jesus became the Lord of my life and saved me from a rotten life. I was living in fornication, drunkenness, drug abuse, doing all the things that we see in society today. Sleeping around. I lived like that. I lived in a depraved mind. I lived in a heart that was deluded. I've been there, I've done that. And you know what? Sometimes what happens in life is that we think that's the right way to live. But I'm here to tell you today that sin brings forth death, but God's gift of, of life is granted to you. Anybody that lives in sin will find themselves in depraved and destructive behaviors and patterns that will destroy your society. People, It's funny. It's funny that police are coming because of a preacher of righteousness. This is how far our nation has gone. Britain, wake up! Wake up! They would call police on a preacher that's telling people to repent and live right. But then everybody's living wrong. Everybody's living in sin. But nobody calls the police because we're living in the last days. We are living in the last days where the Bible says Satan, the prince of the world, is dominating and causing people to go to hell. And when preachers come and say, repent, we are the bad guys. The Bible says, actually, Jesus said, one day they're going to think that killing Christians is doing God a favor. And guess what? Britain claims to stand on the word of God. The queen claims to be the, to, to be the leader of England. Don't we all say, God save the queen? The queen swears on the Holy Bible. The Holy Bible. I preach the Holy Bible. And I'm the guy that's in the wrong. <laughs> This is called hypocrisy. This is called the delusion. This is called Britain has gone under hill because of sin. And God is calling you back to him. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the very foundation of Britain. Where the great revivals have come. Charles Wesley has come from this land. Preached the word. John Wesley has preached all over the world. Came from England. Told people that Jesus saves. The King James Version of the Bible came from England. If you want to be in, in the bar as a lawyer, as an attorney, in England, you know what? You need to swear upon the Bible. You need to swear upon the Bible. But now preaching the Bible is a crime. Now preaching the Bible is a taboo. Now preaching the Bible is something wrong. Now preaching the Bible makes people afraid. But I'm here to tell you, you should be afraid of the hellfire because hellfire is coming, judgment day is coming, and Jesus Christ is coming to judge the living and the dead. And if you're not in a right relationship with God, you will find yourself in hell. Can I say something quickly? Well, I what can you say? Can I say something? My name is David. David here chooses okay no. what, what do you want to say why don't you tell me what you want to say because you just interrupted you just interrupted me while i'm preaching so what do you want to say Woo! just tell me okay you pick and choose the parts of the bible that you want to push your narrative the bible also says you can't shave i, I can't help noticing okay. you're shaving sir i'll give you the mic hi there uh 
David. David. David picks and chooses the parts of the Bible that promotes his narrative. The Bible also says, in the same parts as the uh, anti-gay bollocks, the Bible also says you can't shave. I can't help noticing you're shaving, sir. You want me to answer that? Well, I just can't help noticing that you just ignore the parts of the Bible that apply to you. The Bible also says eating shrimp is an abomination. The Bible says that you can't mix foods, that's cheese, and, uh, that's dairy and meat. If you have a cheeseburger, you're going to hell, my friends. The Bible says you can't wear clothes that mixes different types of material. Do you, do you want me to answer that? The Bible uh, says that women can be stoked if they do something wrong. The Bible says that you can buy women for livestock. The Bible teaches a lot of stuff, and people like David here just chooses the parts that push the parts that he wants to be true. Do, do you want me to answer that? Do you want me to answer that? Thank you. It sounds all smart. Eh? These are like things you find off the internet for uh, skeptics.com. Listen, do you believe in the Bible, first, first of all? Absolutely not. I'm a man of science. But you're a man of science. What do you think of the Bible? Uh, I think it's incredibly homophobic, racist, misogynistic, bullshit. Okay. Oh, wait, 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 wait a second, wait a second. Please, police officers, he called my religion BS. That's called religious discrimination. Were you arrested? <laughs> please, please, because when you call someone's religion BS, that's a hate crime. I'm challenging you now. You see the hypocrisy. I don't touch my stuff. Assault. You're a fucking just touch. Hey, hey, hey! You're racist. Fucking prick. Please. You're racist. Okay. Speak. Uh, Andrew. Andrew. I need the batteries. Where did I? Remember I gave you the bag of batteries? Um. No, no, no. It's okay. No, I'm glad you asked those questions. Hold on a second, guys. We're going to answer all his questions. Why? Why? All you fucking doing is causing shit. No, no, no. No, you're actually swearing at me, and you're and you're being verbally aggressive. You have the batteries. Hold on. Hold on, guys. Okay, so while I'm getting batteries here, I see the anger inside of your heart. The Bible says when you're angry with your brother. Okay, you can, you can be verbally assaultive all you want. But I said nothing wrong. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Get the arms. So we just saw somebody be religiously discriminative, but nobody's taking notes, even though he called my religion BS. Nobody took notes, nobody's questioning him, nobody's even considering arresting him. Interesting. But when I talk about homelessness, or homosexuality, or heterosexuality, and I quote Bible scripture, police are here. Now, this is the hypocrisy of our country. Now, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, a, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Get the, get, the, get the crowd. Get the crowd. So now, okay, so second, I'm going to answer all his questions. Now, we have a guy that physically assaults me, touches my stuff. Nobody gets arrested. But now, pardon? I know, I know. I just want everybody to see the hypocrisy still touching my stuff. So, so still touching my stuff. Okay, as far as I as far as I know, that's against the law. But nobody nobody enforces the law against Christians, even though I'm preaching religion. Now I'm going to talk about all your, your 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 stuff. Now, what he brought up was Old Testament commands within a theocracy of Israel. There is such thing in the Bible called an Old Testament and New Testament. In the New Testament, we are no longer under the ritualistic codes of the past. That is something that Israel had to do to show a sign and a distinction between right and wrong. But the, Paul the Apostle said in the book of Romans that all have been accused of sin. And now because of Jesus Christ, we are now saved by grace if you embrace him as your Lord and Savior. So we are no longer under the shrimp laws. We are no longer under the hair cutting laws. We are no longer under the fabric laws. These are all covenant principles. But the new covenant says we are saved by grace. And if you trust in him, you can be saved. So no, all of those points that he made are stupid. I heard everybody clapping, but you don't even know the Bible. Have you ever read it? 
Have you ever read the Bible to know the difference between the Old and the New Testament? Young people, you can go on the internet and find all of his questions. The Bible says don't eat shrimp. Okay, well the New Testament says those things were only for a time to show the difference between clean and unclean, but now we are saved by grace. And I'm telling you today, we are saved by grace. Why? Because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. There are none righteous. No, not one. There are none righteous. Even if you kept the dietary law, there are still none righteous. Even if you, did, you, shaved your, you didn't shave your beard, there are still none righteous. Even if you kept the whole law, there are still none righteous. Jesus came on the scene and, and a man came to him and he said, Sir, what must I do to be saved and inherit eternal life? I've kept the law since I was young. And Jesus said to him, he said, sell all you have and follow me. And the man was disappointed because he was very rich. And Jesus said, it's harder for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And it's easier for a horse to go through a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And I'm speaking to the rich right now. And if you're going to say I'm speaking hate speech when I talk to the rich, so be it. Listen, I'm talking to the rich right now. I'm saying to the rich, your riches will not buy you eternal life. Stop harassing me. I'm not harassing you. Your riches will not buy eternal life. You need Jesus in your life. You need Jesus. Stop. Yeah. You're on the band of the Lord of Jesus. Jesus is love. Yeah. You're, You're on the band of the Lord of Jesus. 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 What did I, what did I say? Jesus, 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 Jesus is love. Money. What does love mean? Love. Love is when you love somebody. Okay, yeah. does love have a definition? Uh, love, is love is everywhere. Love has no definition. Okay, so 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 I said that I that I love to sleep with animals. Is that love? So love has a de love has a definition. Okay, so bestiality is out of it. So that's not love, even though I love it. It's wrong. Okay, you see the hypocrisy here. I asked him. I said, he says love has no definition. So I said, if I slept with an animal, is that love? And he said, he said no, that's not love. And I'm here to tell you today. Listen, love does have a de definition. First Corinthians chapter 13 says. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love rejoices in the truth. Love does no evil. Love believes all things, endures all things, hopes all things. Love never ends. And so the Bible says, the Bible says, what they're doing is illegal too. What they're doing is illegal. Please 
wipe that off. Who's working with us? Please wipe that off. No, no, no. No, I'm preaching now. I'm going to preach a different message for you. You know what, guys? Let everybody not like each other. How about that? You know what? Let Britain be overrun with, with, with philosophies you don't like. Let everybody rob each other. How about that? You know what? I'm going to preach it. Let, let condoms be distributed everywhere. Strip clubs be set up everywhere. Let every marriage fall apart. You know what? How, how about this? Sleep around with who you want to sleep around with. Sleep around with dogs. Marry whatever you want to marry. Do whatever you want to do. How about that? You know what? And when somebody robs your purse, do not complain. Don't call the police. Because it's not wrong. It doesn't matter. Because everything is right. It really doesn't matter what you do. So you know what? I should preach that. Am I going to get a crap? Everybody smoke weed and be happy. Everybody get drunk. You see that? I think you love sin. That's your problem. You love sin. That's why you hate me. You hate what I got to say because I don't say what you, your flesh wants to hear. You want me to tell you to live in sin. And if I told you, you know, we're going to have a party. Everybody's going to smoke weed and get high. How many of you going to go, yeah? I've been saying this for years, dude. <laughs> Listen, guys. Look, 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 look. You might not like God. And you might love your sin. You might hate me. But listen, I thought you love everybody. Everybody say, oh love. We should just love. But do you love me? You love me? You love me? Then that means, that means, oh, that, that doesn't sound like love. I'm a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a prick now. But I thought you love. I thought you pushed love in society. Just love everybody. You guys are liars. That's not love. You don't love. Because the Bible says God is love. And love has a definition. Love says love rejoices in the truth and does not rejoice in evil. But you rejoice in evil, which means you do not love. Now you're harassing me. I'm not love. So are you love? Are you love? You hate people. I hate. You hate. How? How? How do I hate? You go to club. Who? What? I don't even know what that word is. I don't speak English like that. I speak Canadian English. I don't know what poofs is. I don't know what that is. But listen, you guys call pop fizzy drinks. I, that sounds funny to me. <laughs> fizzy drinks sounds like a little kid. Like, Look, mommy, the fizzy drinks. We say pop. We say garbage. You say rubbish. I don't know what you guys are all saying. But one thing I do know, I'm preaching the truth. I'm telling you that there's a God who loves you and died for you. And if you don't turn to him, what you're doing is that you're, you're embracing your sin. You're embracing a lie. And God is saying, if you live in lies, you're going to find yourself in a dark place of destruction. I'm going to prove it to you. Where's my cards, brother? I'm going to prove it to you. You put your hand on the fire. I see Superman here. Come here, Superman. Come here, Superman. Come on, Come on give Superman a big hand. Come on. Now, I grew up with Superman. He was my favorite hero. And Superman came from the, the planet Kalel. Kalel in the Bible means praise. It's where we get hallelujah, Kalel, hallelujah. He came from the planet called hallelujah. Isn't that amazing? Praise the Lord. Now Superman, he saved the world from evil villains, evil people. Because once upon a time, we used to have we used to have superheroes. Heroes that would stand for justice and stand for what's right. And Superman is one of those guys. Would you like to say something, Superman? Good afternoon, all the shots. Pardon? Good afternoon, all the shots. Okay, so you're not really Superman then. Okay, you can go. So Superman is not standing up for justice anymore. He lost, that's why Superman's not the famous character anymore. It's X-Men. <laughs> X-Men, X-Men took out Superman. Now listen, the real Superman that I know stood up for what was right, stood up for justice. He had a big S on his chest, which stands for savior. Superman was a savior. He was Superman because he saved the planet. He was a savior. Don't you notice that everybody likes superheroes? Most kids like superheroes. You know why? Because deep inside of our hearts, we all want to be saved. 
We all want to see justice. We all want to see what's right. Why do you think there's so many people getting upset? They feel something that, well, Is he gonna get arrested yet? Is he gonna get arrested yet? Well, you know what? Look what's going on here. Actually, he made my speaker louder. Yeah, that's awesome. He actually helped me out. Now, here's the thing. People are cheering on for assault. People are cheering for assault. People are cheering for assault and damage to people's property. This is sad. This is sad. This is what is going on with Britain. You want to know what the problem is, Britain people? English people? You want to know what the problem is with your country? People are supporting wickedness and denying truth. Denying righteousness. That's the problem with your country. You know, it's, no, it does apply. Because we see a bunch of people angry at the preachers. Not saying you, not everybody. Okay, I'll clarify. Not everybody. Thank you. Not everybody in Britain. There are still righteous people in Britain. And that's why I'm still here. That's why there's still a Bible being sworn upon on the government institutions. Because there are righteous people within Britain. But you know what's going wrong with Britain? We're slowly getting into politically correctness. We're slowly giving into a culture that has no respect for God. We're slowly giving into a culture of unrighteousness. And it's right before your eyes. Look what's going on. People, uh, uh, people abusing people, verbally assaulted. So now you, no, no, I'm preaching. What did I say? What did you say about our army? What did you say about our army? Okay. Do you want to know? I'll, I'll, I'll repeat it. How about I repeat it? You preach yourself in the man of God, Jay. You ain't no man of God. You talk in hatred, Jay. You told people that are homeless. Oh, yeah, they're going to go to hell. People that are gay are going to go to hell. Oh, you're a man of God. Jesus came in the name of love. You come in the name of hatred. What are you coming in? Draw God. Okay, okay. That's okay. It is on the camera. It's actually live. Okay, you want to you know what I think? I'll repeat it. Can I, can I repeat it? I'll repeat everything. Okay, got, okay, hold on. Let me speak. Let me speak. Hours. Oh, we've heard your opinions for fucking hours. We don't need it. You don't need it. No, I don't need it. Okay, but, that, but you're not the only one in this country. Yeah. Okay, listen. Listen. How many of you believe in God here? Put up your hand. Okay. How many of you have no problem with what I'm saying? Put up your hand. Many of you. Many of you. Okay, I didn't ask. That wasn't my question. So, so what this tells me is that we're in a culture where there's differences of opinion. And when you're in a culture of differences of opinion, you respect what they got to say, and you walk on. If you don't like what I got to say, it's a public sidewalk. You can pass on by. If you want to stand around and listen to me preach, that's on you. Don't blame me for your inadequacy to walk. If you don't want to walk, that's your problem. If you love what I say, then stay. If you don't like what I say, walk on by. This is called a free country. And free country is really free. I can preach, I can be myself without fear of rep retribution. I can do it with dignity and respect. And listen, if you don't like it, Walk by. But you know what? I see signs everywhere, billboards everywhere, people preaching everything every day. I have to turn on the television and I hear all this music talking about sleeping around, talking about using women with images I don't want to see. I see things on the streets, parades on the streets. I see a bunch of stuff every day and I have to live with it even if I don't like it. What a fair country. I gotta live with atheism, I gotta, I gotta live with evolution being taught at schools, I gotta live with people preaching religions I don't agree with, I gotta, I gotta live with people uh, putting my religion down, I gotta, I gotta put up with assault, when they, then they don't get arrested half the time, I gotta put up with all of these... Oh, you should be naked! You should be naked! I'm not complaining. The only thing I'm doing is preaching! Now, here's what I'm gonna say, I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna repeat. I'm gonna say this. Every nation, every nation has its gangs, has people. So this is where I started out, preaching about gangs. You know what gangs really are? It's when one gang is doing illegal activity, pimping women, doing illegal stuff, trying to occupy a territory and make money. Then we get another gang coming in and going to that same country or that same place 
and there becomes gang violence. It's the same thing that happens with communities. Communities, over a history of time, have looked at other communities and said, well, I like what they have, so I'm gonna grab what they have, and there's a big war. It's the same thing with governments. Governments go into other places of government, say, well, I like, I like your diamonds. I like your gold. I, 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 want, what, I want some of those things. I'm coming. I like those things. And you know what happens? There becomes a war. And that's what's happened with, with, with nations that have dominated other nations. Shut it's the same up. thing with armies. Shut armies are just, are, are just representatives of the government. They go and do the work of the government and they end up taking over things that don't belong to them. And that's exactly what happened in slavery. In slavery for 400 years, all the governments did was they committed human trafficking. We are, listen, slavery was basically human trafficking. What is human trafficking? We see one, one, one uh, group of people, gangs in one country, selling women to people in another country that have the money to become sex slaves. 400 years ago, we had, we had work slaves. We had people bought from other people, human beings, being slaves to some other party. These, these are just gang activities. In fact, you know, listen, and I'm here to tell you today, listen, this is the truth. We're fighting for things that are full of greed. That's what we're fighting for. We are a greedy nation. Our hearts are greedy. And that's the cause of war. We fight people and we kill people because of war. We think we're more powerful than the other person and so we go and take it by force. And now you got all the people that were colonized and subjugated to slavery coming to the very land that subjugated them, which is Britain. Because Britain once ruled over the Caribbean. Britain once ruled over India. Britain once ruled over Bangladesh. Britain once ruled over China. And Britain now, in these last days, ends up having all those same people coming to the country. And then we have people that don't want immigration. We want Britain first, they say. Britain first. Well, what is Britain first, anyway? Well, maybe you're saying Britain has certain values that I don't like seeing all the Muslims and all those people from the other countries coming to my country. We are a Christian nation. People say Britain first. I'm Canadian. Canadian, you're not in this country. So why are you claiming about gang culture in this country when you're not actually in this country? Okay. from Canada. Okay. Can I explain? So if you've got to explain stuff, go back to Canada and explain it. Okay. Don't understand. Do you, okay. Do you, don't understand yeah. what gang culture you're on about. Okay. We don't have the gang culture you have in Canada. There are no gangs in the entire England? Entire Britain, actually. Entire Britain? No, no, no gangs. No underground crime. No there it is. So you're, so you're, so now you're lying to me. You're telling me there's no gangs, and now you're telling me there is gangs. So I was right, and you're wrong. Okay, enough. Listen, what is Britain first anyway? It's a culture. You believe in British culture. What is British culture? What did you say about homeless people? You, you want me to talk about? Okay. You know what? There's a few reasons why people are homeless. Okay. If people are homeless, usually they have mental illnesses. Okay. Or they've been refused. They've been refused by the government to have social assistance. I'm assuming you have social assistance, correct? Do you have social assistance? You're not home. Okay, good. So, so, listen, listen, man, don't tell me what to preach. It's, listen, I'm gonna, first of all, first of all, I don't even know why I'm following you. I'm gonna finish what I'm preaching and then, and, and I don't even know who you are, neither you. You're full of hatred. You're full of hatred. Listen, what is British culture? British culture is a culture that believed in the Bible. It's a Christian culture. That's why the Queen of England is the head of the church. Am I right or am I wrong? I'm right. So if the Queen, the very image of what it means to be British, believes in the Bible, then to be a true citizen of Britain, of England, means that you support what the Queen supports. And I'm here to tell you today, as a former or a member of the Commonwealth, a Canadian citizen who still has the Queen on our dollar bill, that I support the Bible, the B-I-B-L-E. I support the teachings of the Word. And the teachings of the Word are the very foundation of British society. And if you don't like the foundation of your own country, then maybe you don't belong in your own country. I believe in the standard of England, which is the Bible. The Bible. 
Listen, don't tell me to preach. I'll talk. Listen, what, you, you think I'm afraid to preach what I preach? I preach what I preach because I'm entitled to, and it's based on the word of God. Listen, what did I preach? I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna talk to you again about what I'm saying. Please don't follow me around like that. You want a free country, right? Show me in that Bible where it said what you said about our army and about the homeless people. What did I say? Why don't you repeat you know what, you what said, I said? No, no, no. It's yeah, it's live right now. You've toned it down. No, no. Here, I'm not, oh, no. What did I say yes, about that? Why don't you just tell me? Why don't you just tell me? You said about our army. What did I say? People. What did I say? Oh, yes. It's on your yes. Camera. You know what? It's on your Britain camera. has raped people. It's on your camera. Hello. Britain has raped people. You are the one spreading hate with no. what you're saying. No. Britain has gone into Africa, yes, into are. India, into China, and has stolen and taken by force many things. This is a fact. This is a fact. Did I tone that down? What what, now what else did I say? I'm going to repeat it because the police are here now. Britain. What you said what in the beginning that caused all of these I'll tell you what Tell me what it, what it was. Just I'll tell you make the accusation. The army, the, our army rapes people. That is what you said. Yeah, I, sa I just repeated. I said what Britain has raped villages and people because and they have you taken... You said that. Listen. You okay, what do you mean by... Do you, do, you, do you know what the context of what I was saying? Yeah, I said, okay, listen, I'm not going to argue with you. It's on video. You know what? How about this? Go to YouTube and watch it for yourself. If, if, if you have a problem with what's on video, you can watch it. But I'm not going to repeat myself. Listen, the truth is, the reason why we're doing what we're doing is because of sin. Sin makes us greedy. Sin is the cause of rape. Sin is the cause of taking over lands that don't belong to you. It's sin. Sin. It's sin in the heart. Sin in the mind, sin in the heart. And that's the problem with our society. If we continue to live in sin, our society, our nation will fall apart. And that's why we have the problems that we do. We have a lot of problems because of sin. And if we don't repent of our sin, you're going to see a Britain that's going to fall apart. So now we're saying Britain first, we love Britain, we want to keep Britain the way it is. Well, what does it mean? Why are you not saying this in Canada? What does it mean? What does it mean to be British? Just please don't touch my stuff. Why are you not saying this in Canada? Sorry? Why are you not saying this in Canada? No, I do. Well, fuck off back to Canada. Okay, listen. Okay, so I don't, I don't think, sir. So now you're being religiously discriminated. You're being a bigot. How many bigots are here today? I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the police to arrest you. Bigots? A lot of bigots here. You can't even handle freedom, and you want to live in freedom. Your soldiers fought for a free country, and now a preacher of the Bible that your queen holds, you can't even respect, and I'm the problem? No, I think you're the problem. I think you're the problem. Because what I preach is entirely in line with the British government, and with the British people, and with the queen. The queen would probably love what I preach. No, she wouldn't. She would. You know, because she's old school. She's old school. She holds the King James Bible. She holds the King James Bible, the very Bible I hold. She's the queen of the church, the head of the church. As far as I know, she still believes in the Bible. She still wears a hat, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, as far as I know. She's still old school. She still wears a skirt, saying that she's a female, not a male. She still entertains and holds biblical values. So what am I here to tell you today? David. Jesus died for your sin. I need a Jesus died for your sin. Jesus died for your sin. And if you don't turn to Jesus, there's a battery in there and a plug. Now, if you don't turn from your sin, listen, you're going to see more devastation. Here's the good news. I talked a lot about sin. I talked a lot about the problems, and I think you see the problem. There's a disgruntlement with God. There's a disgruntlement with the Bible. There's a struggle on the inside when it comes to do with truth. I'm not a bad guy. I'm actually a very educated guy. I have a master's degree from a credible university in Canada. I have a job. 
I live somewhere. I'm a pastor. I'm a man of character and dignity. I'm not stupid. I do have a, I, I have a big mouth. I have a big mouth. Because God made me with a mouth to speak. And I'm allowed to speak. I have a tongue and I have teeth. They're clean. I brush my teeth. I floss my teeth. I have a breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'm a regular human being that believes in right and wrong. And I believe the Bible says God has given us a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. I believe I'm sound. You know what it means? You know they have tests to determine whether you're sound. There's some people that are not sound in our mental asylums. People that are in mental asylums can't function as regular human beings in society. They think in unclear fashions. They do things that most people would not do because it's destructive. That is what determines whether someone's sound or unsound. So what that tells me is that anybody that's supporting... Well, I don't have to hear you. I don't have to hear you, mate. I don't, I don't have to Please don't touch my stuff. How many times do I have to hit, have bigots? Bigots and religious discriminators touch my stuff, violate my rights, in order for something to be done. If I were to say one little thing about something that is so volatile in this politically correct world, I'd be arrested immediately. <laughs> but people assault me, throw, throw things on my equipment, verbally harass me. <laughs> is done. Doo -doo. Doo -doo is done. So let me get back to what I was saying. My friends, the reason why many of you are standing around today, and the reason why many of you feel convicted and feel weird about what I'm saying, is because what you are seeing is the sign of the time. You're seeing how far your nation has come. This is uncommon. It's uncommon for someone to preach about God in the streets. Go back 200 years ago, this was a regular thing. Go back to 100 years. Everybody was in church on Sunday. Everybody respected a preacher. That's why they still have laws that protect preachers. You're standing here because it's strange. It's strange to hear righteousness in the streets when Solomon said wisdom preaches in the streets. Wisdom is, is, is being pushed in the streets, but nobody's listening. I'm preaching truth. I'm preaching wisdom. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You cannot have wisdom without God. You cannot have love without God. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 4 and 4 that God is love. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says, love, I'm going to read it for you. How about that? Love does come in a form. It came in Jesus. Love came in Jesus. Jesus is love. I'm going to preach from my pulpit right here. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It says, love is patient. Love is is kind. Love does not envy. Love is not proud. Love is not puffed up. Love is not rude. Love does not seek its own. Love is not easily provoked. Love thinks no evil. Love does not rejoice in iniquity but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. Many of you, when you get married and you're looking for quotes about love, you end up picking 1 Corinthians chapter 13 in the Bible. Love does have a definition. One thing I like to look at in the, in the version of love, what, what, what the Bible says is love, love does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. I rejoice in the truth. When you rejoice, you know when your favorite soccer team wins, Manchester United or whatever teams you guys have? 
You rejoice, yeah, this my soccer team won. Yeah, you rejoice. They won, they won, they won, they won, they won. You're proud. You broadcast it. You tweet it. You text it. You put it on Facebook. Hey, guys, Manchester United won. Manchester United won.